very first and most important thing, of course, is that this plant has been able to establish a very adequate tap. Of course, we severed it in our digging here, but you can see that it was proceeding in a very straight fashion down through the plow layer and, of course, continued on down into the subsoil. But let's take a closer look now at how some of these roots are developing their feeding network. As you can see, there are a large number of roots right along here. And these roots, these fibrous roots, are the feeding parts of the plant. And I don't know if we're going to be able to pick them up here today. If we look very closely, we may be able to see the nodules. They're nice and pink in color, and every one of these feeder root pairs is loaded with nodules. The supply of nitrogen in the soil is essential to the life of the nodule. You can see this soil mass that I'm breaking off here is loaded with feeder root mass. The result of that feeder root mass is to establish a larger crown, and that crown in turn gives rise to a larger number of vegetative shoots. In this case, in this first growth, we have uh, four shoots here and three, a total of seven shoots occurring on this one plant. As we look at this block of soil with more root activity in it, we see that we have clusters, complete clusters of nodules here occurring around the root mass. And one of the things which is most dramatic concerning the aeration process with alfalfa is that we maintain this kind of nodule activity throughout the life of the stand. In so many cases, we're uh, looking at alfalfa stands three to five years of age that have no nodule activity left in the soil. There is nothing happening on those roots. There are, of course, a complex of reasons why this occurs. One of the major ones, of course, is that many of these plants are unable to establish adequate amount of annual regrowth of root mass. Again here, you can see these roots, these feeder roots. Okay, and here another plant which is established in its first growth, approximately eight, nine shoots. There are nine shoots here on this one plant. And this is one of the major production, one of the major yields. got here. You can see we're working with the same soil type. And it's very apparent it was much easier to remove this plant from that soil. Here we're running, uh, we've got three shoots on this plant. we got a rather sparse density of, of feeder roots and here's a nodule. We have to uh, look pretty closely here to find nodule activity. Notice this angular approach of the taproot. This indicates secondary tillage compaction prior to establishment of the crop. And uh, let's see what we've got here in this plant for feeder roots. Notice the, <coughs> the density in this soil. There's been no compaction relief during the growing season for this first year. You know, sometimes weeds make good indicators of compacting forces. Look at the angular attack of this uh, dandelion root. Made several right angle bends, attempting to get down through the first two inches of soil. There are several weed species which occur in fields are excellent indicators. Again, a sparsity of feeder roots along this tap root and only one vegetative shoot. And here's a larger tap root. Let's see what we've got here. Again, it removes quite easily because there was very little there was very little rooting activity attaching this plant. How it's affecting your alfalfa stands? Well, we don't get the grass seem to get grass where we use the aerator so quick. The plant grass don't come back. Other year pieces that we haven't used the aerator on the second year stand, we got grass back, plant grass back in already. And this piece doesn't show it yet. 
and this is where we started out. Well, if we if we don't get the quack grass back in, it's obvious they're going to last a lot longer because the quack grass is what crowds everything else up around here. We all know that alfalfa is very tough. Uh, it's a deep-rooted plant, and if it's well cared for, it's uh, pretty hard to kill. Uh, so we're going to look at a situation that developed along with these mosquitoes this morning uh, in this cornfield following uh, an alfalfa hay crop uh, in the rotation. Uh, let me give you a little background on what actually went on out here. Um, as I said, we're in July now. Uh, first year corn in this uh, alfalfa hay crop sod. Uh, we made that decision, of course, last year. And in September, Charles came out with a roundup. Well, a couple fields last year, you didn't have any uh, residual chemicals on at all. Some sod fields and a third year corn field, too. There was nothing out there, and yet you had no weed pressure, as I recall. Right. We didn't have anything. The only thing that grew was the alfalfa. The alfalfa come back. Yeah, we're going to go take a look at that one yet tonight. <laughs> and that's, uh, I guess that's a plus, not a minus, because we got a lot of nitrogen value. About 160 pounds. Yeah, from the alfalfa, and uh, that otherwise we wouldn't have got. <laughs> and, and we didn't have any trouble with any weeds either. The alfalfa, it looked a little green, but once the corn got up above it, it, it really did well. It was on a no-tail no piece, so uh, I was surprised to really see it come so good. Okay, so uh, this is the field. This, this is, is this is the alfalfa field that uh, we got a lot of alfalfa coming back in, but we had a beautiful crop of corn on it, and the alfalfa looks good again this year. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps coming back. It just keeps coming back, and we just keep stunting it. I guess is about all we're doing. We don't haven't really killed it. All right, what are you stunting it with, Charles? Well, uh, we're using. Uh, Two parts of thiosol and uh, half a pint of Roundup last year on it. And this year we're using two quarts of thiosol and uh, two quarts of Ranger. Okay, and, uh, two pints, uh, one, I think. One quart of Ranger this year. One quart of Ranger, not two quarts. And it, I, we hope to just stun it again. You're trying to keep it alive? Yeah. Uh, we think that if we can keep it alive, we'll get some more nitrogen out of it than we would if we killed it right off. And it's you not hurting anything at all. Don't seem to be hurting anything. So the yield was tremendous last year. We hope we have it this year. Here now. And uh, we're going to take a look at this uh, alfalfa interceding with corn uh, closer up. Well, we've waded out in here, gotten our share of water on us from last night's shower. Quite a shower, too. Uh, as you can see, this corn uh, for northern New York is proceeding very well. Planted uh, about the seventh or eighth day of May, this corn is uh, really storming along nicely, and uh, we'll clear a couple more leaves here, and uh, we'll get a closer look at what's going on down in the bottom of this cornfield. I think you'll see that it certainly has not uh, worked any hardship for the amount of growth of alfalfa we have in the bottom here. So let's uh, let's take a closer look down in here. Got uh, got alfalfa plants here, and uh, frankly, there's uh, there's virtually nothing else in the bottom of this field except alfalfa. Um, here's a little volunteer right in here of uh, of some nut sedge trying to come, but it really doesn't look like it's going to amount to very much. It's so heavily shaded right now by our alfalfa cover and the corn, it's not going to do very much. This uh, plant here, standing approximately 24 to 30 inches tall, has flowered beautifully. We thought at one point, perhaps, uh, <coughs> with the stress that we saw on this plant from the second Roundup application, that maybe we wouldn't see the kind of flowering that we're seeing here. Uh, a little later on this morning, this place will be an absolute beehive of activity. Uh, literally, the honeybees from the area just working these out here, Charles, so I can dig this alfalfa plant. Here, on, Are you going to take over that thing? Yeah, you don't know how to handle that. <coughs> I see. There we got it. One of the things I wanted to see, and there they are. 
I don't see a lot of them because we've been pretty rough on it, but right there underneath your thumb. See that right there? Yep. You know what that is? Nodules, you tell me. That's right. I wanted to see if the stunting process that we've been performing on these plants was killing those nodules, see? Mm-hmm. If we were killing them, then we weren't really gaining a whole lot out of this thing but some mulch, you know? But So we're not killing them, so we're, gonna, we're getting the nitrogen out of them then. That's right. They're still alive and well. That's right, and look at this moisture. Now, how long has it been since you guys had much rainfall around here? <laughs> We're drier enough. Now, just be good now. <laughs> Popcorn and fire, really. <laughs> it's, been, it's awful dry. It really is terrible dry around here. Well, I wouldn't believe that from here. I, you wouldn't by looking at the top of it. There's, a, there's quite a lot of moisture there, believe it or not. That's got really nice structure, you know. Yep. Look at those earthworm holes in there. A lot, of, a lot of worms over here. The boys would probably take up fishing if they knew that. Well, you know, we couldn't help but notice in that other cornfield of yours all those seagulls. You know what they're doing out there, don't you? Yes, taking the worms. We should be allowed to shoot them <laughs> so they leave the worms there for the land. <laughs> there, in a sense, it's just another head of another livestock. You've got a flock now as well as a herd, see? Yeah, well, i got enough of them. <laughs> they're, they're eating at a point in your food chain out here of earthworms. There's one. They're eating out here in your food chain in a place and they're actually producing more fertility for you with their activity. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. What what few they're eating is not going to really devastate you. You got it ain't, millions. It ain't going to break me. No, you got millions of them out here. I mean, every time I look down, I see another one. Yeah, there's a lot there's of worms here. An awful lot of worms. Just loaded with them. And you tell me that's good, so. Well, they're producing a lot of this good structure we see out here. Yep, yep. They're a aerating the soil along with our aerator. Right? Yeah, that's the idea, I think. Yeah. You know what? Yep. If we do a few things right, uh, God's natural system of trying to bless us in the earth starts to work right. Yep. Obviously, the visual thing that you started to see, you've been able to handle. Somehow, you've operated in enough faith in what you were seeing, even though it was a mess, and it looked pretty chaotic out here. Yeah, it yeah. sure does. <laughs> it's hard to... There's For an old-time farmer, it's hard to look at this and think you're going to get anything, <laughs> really. You know, uh, when I started farming 27 years ago on my own, boy, you had to have about three inches of real nice loose soil. I mean, it had to be beautiful, it's just like a carpet out here, you know? Yeah. And just like a rock under that three inches <laughs> is really what it was. And now uh, this stuff is all an advantage to you, so why not use it? Now, this is... This is really some beautiful tilth, um, and I've seen soil like this turn into concrete under intensive tillage, and yours just keeps getting more and more structure to it all the time. Yeah. The water seems to disappear faster all the time out here. We have less wet holes all the while. Thank you very much, Charlie, for your time and, and your candor. I really okay. appreciate it. Thank you. And I know the people that uh, are going to view this tape appreciate it, too. Okay. Thank you.